Okay, so we had a technical difficulty, but we good. We good. We good. So we're gonna have to just roll back a little bit. This is episode one of interviews with friends, family, and people who are doing cool shit. Um, our first first guest is. I'm gonna let you say it again because my brain is fried, and I don't <laughs> want to miss miss say it again. So. Uh, yeah. Yo, it's Sam Kuhn on the mic. What are you man saying? Man like, man like. It's actually really, it's really nice to have you as a first guest. I think it's long overdue. It's also... Thank you, man. The most organic uh, way to start this, I think. Um, and for those of you who don't know, um, Sam makes amazing music. If you've heard it, you know what we're talking about. If you haven't, you need to go check it out. It will be on the link uh, underneath uh, this video. Um, actually start there what does that name represent for you what does that how did um, yeah how did you come about that name uh, like 11, 12 I got into anime just through like a school friend mm -hmm. and um, I literally just fell knee deep into it uh, I guess that's like a cliche entry point for a lot of western people into that world. yeah people love that it's actually quite um, it feels niche but it's not if that makes sense. Like, there's a lot of people that were raised on that. Like, yes. just even through, like, Dragon Ball Z. Yes, yes. Like, the, yes. the I'd say that's, like, surface-level anime. 100%. And then you can get deeper and deeper. See, <laughs> and actually, you're right. So, Dragon Ball Z was actually my first thing. Just seeing my cousins watch it when I was, like, seven or something. Mm. And then, yeah, as I got older, I just fell into Japanese culture and um, different aspects of Japanese culture. Like, just not even anime. And um, once I started making music... I was just like trying to think of a name and mm. I always thought how they put like Chan, Sama, Kun, mm. Sam at the end of their name so um, it sounds sick so I just yeah just did it really. Yeah. I, I didn't really think too much I guess. It is a, it's a nice name. I, I like it. I guess a lot of mispronunciations. Yeah yeah. <laughs> that's one thing I didn't think of. But I feel like that's with a lot of things like just in general but um I like I like the name. I think it stands out. It it's got this. Um, you do give me samurai vibes, anyways. Like okay. just in life, it feels like that. Like yeah. just from knowing you. Like <laughs> maybe that's a good way that's to. Good it's always good also to like give context, I guess, to people listening. So me and Sam have been friends for like for years, um, long long time. Grew up skating in Cantalos. If you know about Cantalos, then. You're tapped in. There's a, yeah, there's a lot of talent, and I've realised that recently, being in like the music scene and just in general, like the amount of people that have come out from Cantalos or how, who you know who spent a lot of their time there and then have gone on to do like really cool shit. Um, a lot of talented people, especially in our era, we were there. Like you're still there. Like it's still um, a part. You're still a part of it. But there was a big error, I guess, like 10 years ago, 8, 10 years. Um, 20, 30, like 2012 to like 2015. Yeah. Like, it's like the heyday. Yeah. Really. And there was a lot of people who had like youngers, olders. It was a perfect blend of just people. Um, a blend of culture. As well, as really well. Culture. As well. And a lot of inspiration, I guess. People picked up from other people. And um, that's kind of like the background. Um, we've both been interested in music for like the longest. <laughs> yeah, well, I feel like that's kind of one of the things that brought us together in the first place. Really. Yeah. Aside from skating. Aside from skating, but it was like kind of, I think for me, it was like you being one of the first people that was tapped into like lyrics mm. on like a deeper level and like actually really listening. I didn't really have a lot of people around me when I was younger. So I, I don't know, in a way, I, I kind of give back to you. Because you, like, help, like... Spark that. You, you, you help me, like, kind of just, like, get deeper into that. If I yeah. Didn't, I don't know. I didn't have too many... I never really have. Music's always been kind of a personal thing with me because I think a lot of the stuff that I've listened to growing up has never really resonated with a lot of people around me. But, mm. but yeah, music's sick. We used to listen to Currency. That's probably our biggest, like, just just between us two. Like, I don't, I don't think I've ever spoken to somebody else about one single artist or like been so inspired yeah. but and I think currency is like the biggest 
yeah. my biggest inspiration and something that we we spoke about a lot because just yeah the bars the consistency yeah. um the ability to like just use different themes different like movies like even like names of mixtapes like just all that shit and we Crazy. we used to love that and be like all right we want to do something like this like and, and get involved. Um, I definitely think after this, we'll definitely get involved in some music together. Because I think we're both in that space where we can collaborate. Yeah. But um, 100%, man. I think it's if. So there'll be a, a mix of people watching this. So people who've heard your music, and then there's people who haven't. Um, so the people who have heard your music will understand. And the people that haven't, go and check it out. Um, Shades on the Stone. Shade on the Stone. Shade on the Stone. Come on. Make sure you stream that up. I saw it today. I was like, let me double check. It won 731 listeners, bro. That's mad. Like, yeah. deep that. That's like... That's a, lot of, that's a lot of people. And, like, it's crazy. It's crazy to, to, to see, like, uh, your debut kind of release and to get that much love because we were talking about that at Lowe's. Um, how has that felt for you to see the reception, I guess, of something that you've worked hard on? Oh, man, it's fucking surreal, to be honest. Um, yeah, it's mad. I'm mad appreciative of it. Um, I've just spent a lot of time kind of just, like, honing what I do and kind of just, like, I feel like um, it's easy to... I spent a lot of time basically just making music on my own, so I'll probably mm -hmm. say like over two years. Mm -hmm. And during that, well, I've been making music for about four years, but like let's say the first two, two and a half, I wasn't really collaborating with anyone other than like one or two friends. And because of that, you get in your head a lot. It's easy to get in your mm -hmm. head and like just basically have full conversations of whether you think you're worth it or not, you know? Yeah, facts, so, facts, facts. And I think that any artist, music, painter, anything can maybe understand where I'm coming from in that regard so um, it's yeah, like you don't I, know if you should be doing it you're yeah, like am I like, good for this I, or? I, I, I'm in head deep in like loving every second but you still get those kind of like questions mm -hmm. um, but bringing this out and hearing even just one or two people say to me that they found something on there that like proper resonated with them feel like it's just, yeah, job well done. Just makes me the way I describe it is quite like self-reflective in itself. And you, what I think you've done a really, really great job on is putting you in a musical format. So it's like, if you don't, obviously, if you don't, if, if people haven't met you or don't know you, they might not understand that. But the people who have met you and known you maybe for a while, when I hear the music, I'm like, yeah, this is Sam. Like, and and it's and it's beautifully done. All your inspirations, all your, I guess, your feelings, everything that um, makes makes up you is, is in one of those tunes. Um, Thank you, man. That's cool, man. I think it's just it's it's so. It, it's not an easy thing to do, and I, I think that's where we were at just before uh, I realized that we hadn't been recording these things, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's what I wanted to get at. It was um, with with the music. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realize that you have to have to have that. It, to be honest, not just with music. Any any like you were saying, any art form. It's that isolation period where you're listening, you're trying, you're making, you're listening to it. Blah blah blah. blah. Yeah. Just going through this process alone. Um, before you're ready the grind. And, yeah and I think you've done a really good job I think the timing like everything everything you've done you've done a really good job at being patient <laughs> as well which is another hard thing to do as an artist um, and I think people can definitely learn from that um, but let's let's stick to the project um, what what one of those songs for you was your favourite I know it's going to be hard because there's, there's a few that you might resonate with, but which one did you... Oh, no, actually, a better question. Which one did you make first? Which one did I make first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one did you make first? How, how was that process? That's what I want to know, your process in um, making it a project. And did we lose some songs? Did there some songs that didn't make it? Like, there's talk about that. So, okay. yeah, how did, you, how did that start? 
How was the, the first one? Okay. Well, I don't want to go too deep into the process process because I can't give away all of the sauce. The, but the recipe. So the song that I made first on the project was Shoe Marks, I think. Okay. Yeah, I think I made Shoe Marks first. And when I made that, um, I would just like listen to it over and over in my headphones everywhere I went. And it was like one of the first times where I'd made so much shit already um, that was unreleased obviously, but that was like one of the first things that I made where it was just kind of like, I was feet, like the, you, you know the feeling when you make something and you think it's fire and then mm. you go to bed and you wake up and you listen to it and it's just not that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That wasn't happening with this thing. And it was one of my first times really with that. And I was like, okay, cool. I really like this and I don't know I just fed off of like the energy that it gave um, and a sort of theme for a bigger picture more than one song started to emerge in my head mm -hmm. and I kind of just went off from there really I think the cool thing about the project is like it doesn't really sit in one place mm -hmm. from beginning to end even though it might sort of seem like it has a theme to it Mm -hmm. The songs are quite, very quite different to each other. I um, don't know if that makes sense. I know what you mean. But, yeah. I feel it also sounds quite like, in the same time period, like, mm. it's like you look at, um, that, that's another hard thing to do as well with a project mm -hmm. is to um, make it all fit in a way. And it doesn't have to be chronological, it has to be one, two, three, four, but mm -hmm. it just all melds into uh, into a project so you can... Mm -hmm. um, yeah you pick up the vibes and I think um, something that I definitely want to know is like how with the with the project what what does that mean to you what does Shade on the Stone mean like what does putting it out um, how did you feel yeah just those those combinations of songs what what was that yeah what was that meaning for you if that makes sense what is shade on the well, stone? Let's start there. Well, think about the sentence, shade on the stone. Mm -hmm. What do you think of when you hear that? Shade on the stone. For me, let me see, shade on the stone. The stone is a no, shade. No, shade on a stone. Shade on a stone. Yeah. Shade on the stone. How does shade get on a stone? Like a shadow. Something has to be cast, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just like leaving a mark. Okay, okay. You could even get deeper, like, like a nuclear bomb. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, because that's when you get shadows that actually cast on stones. You know when, ah, yeah. like, when the nuclear bomb goes. Well, it was only well, and then you twice. mean like what's like left on yeah, the stone? That part, that like, because that's the only way to let, leave it on there for like life. Okay. But, well, do you know what? That's actually um, the music could live forever but mm. i won't live forever so mm. i can't i can't genuinely genuinely be cast on stone mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. when i walk past it i leave a shadow mm. so like that. that's what shade on the stone really means that's sick that's it it's good to hear it from i think like they say the horse's mouth because everybody will have their own interpretation um of, of, of the music in itself and like especially so like the the one the one bar that resonated with me so so much um, like I told you was that the one about your parents like um, Papa try to guide me from the place I was born Mama try to have me from the, the snakes, snakes and, and the thorns yeah that bit that bit from the aches and the thorns from sorry. the aches and the thorns yeah man's forgetting his own lyrics <laughs> fucking hell <laughs> um, but yeah that that song um, I know you're very close to your family um Maybe we can speak a bit on how that, because I'm sure a lot of people feel that, especially, you know, like people who um, come to London or people who are born in London with parents from another country. That feeling, I think, resonates, uh, that resonated with me in a way like where they try to take you away from something that is bad or not as good and try to take you somewhere better. But sometimes the place where you end up can also have its own kind of it's not all roses exactly um exactly so yeah how does um 
Yeah, I'd like to hear it in your own words, I guess. Like, how... Well, you know, I like to let the lyrics speak for themselves, if I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. And the way that you just kind of uh, broke that down was the message I was trying to put through. Okay, okay. It's that thing of how... um, that, that first love that you have in this world with your parents, if you're lucky enough, mm-hmm. and I've been super, super lucky enough to have the best parents. Mm-hmm. And in that regard, they always tried mm-hmm. to, as well as being super loving and chill, they were very protective. Yeah. And they was always like, trying to save me from the world sort mm-hmm. of thing. But when you come to that kind of real, when they, when, yeah, you as a family come to that realization of the world is you and all around you and mm-hmm. um, your outside influences matter so much. Big time. You know? Big time. Um, and you also, and, I feel like people, yeah, like, just to touch on your saying about parents being a bit protective, like, sometimes I think parents don't realize that the same thing they're trying to protect you from is the same place that you're going to go into and need to navigate. Like you're going to, at some point, have to be an adult and navigate that world yeah. that, I don't know, they might make it seem scary or like, you know, we don't belong, like not saying it just black and white, we don't belong here, but it's that vibe of like, you know, this is something else. But um, yeah, I just think it's so interesting that they try to be so protective, but it's like, no, I need to learn. I need exactly, to learn the, exactly. the, the real the real shit. Um, yeah. From from your perspective, I'd like to know, because I know I know you fuck with Griselda. I know that that's like a big influence for you. Mm-hmm. Um, could you? Right. Yeah. Could you give us maybe like a little list of your influences, just personally, like I, not even to do with the project, just you. A uh, list of my influences people that I always have on repeat mm-hmm. um, people like Rome Streets uh, Cass is Dead Jest um, Rock Marciano um, right. I, I love Griselda as you said but outside of that I like listening to a lot of old school rap like I like listening to Nas a lot mm-hmm. I like listening to just people that like I don't know because I feel like in rap, in this rap thing, well, there's a lot outside of rap, but in the rap thing, it's like, for me, it's just poetry, you know? Mm-hmm. If you go to, if you, if you if you know the right people to really listen to, mm. people like Ransom, like, there's there's crazy people out there, and it's just, I don't know, from like a musician perspective, it's just like free game. Yeah. It's literally free it's game. So true, Listening yeah. to that shit all day long, like, it, it might not be, I, I don't want to be anything else other than Samcom, but... I look up to a lot of those people just for their choice of beats as well. And like mm-hmm. people like Derringer, like the best producer of the 21st century, in my opinion. Right. And like Alchemist and... Yeah, shout out I Alchemist. mean, they're, they're big names and there's there's so many people underneath them as well that need shouting out as well, like Nicholas Craven, like... um, But, yeah, I'm coming for all of them. Jeez, I was coming for the head tops. So that's something that people might not know, that the... The whole project was self-produced, right? Yeah. So that's completely yeah. That's I think, um, I think moving on just in general in music, people, it's not enough, uh, and not in the sense that it's not enough because some people out there can just bar and that's calm. But for something to last long and like you said, like leave a legacy, yeah, I think you have to have your imprint on it and. Um, producing your own stuff if you haven't tried it is very hard and like mm-hmm. it's not and it's quite tedious because um it's like you need these different sides of your brain because the one bit is the beat and then then you're going to rap on it and then all of this stuff so when did you i guess yeah. start um producing when was that your what made you want to start producing for yourself or even just producing full stop uh well, I always loved beats. Like, you know, when we was younger, we was always, like, freestyling shit like that. To mm. be honest, I don't remember really if I actually used to freestyle with you that much. I think, brother, I think uh, when we are younger, I think a lot... I think we did. I think a it, little must, bit, yeah. it must have happened, like... But we someone's going to throw on a beat. Someone's going to chat some yeah, shit, yeah, like... Yeah, yeah, um, But, yeah, so I think I kind of got into it just by... 
I used to listen to a lot of New Jobbies and like D- 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 DJ Premier tunes and shit. And, I, and a lot of the time when I used to listen to Sick Beats, when I was like 18, 17, I was already freestyling a lot, um, trying to get learn how to rap mm. off of like online beats. But I started just thinking like, I can make it better than this. Like mm. not in like an arrogant way, but I'd always have a thought where it's like, I can do this like before I ever tried. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I just started trying and Obviously, because I was already rapping, like I kind of understood it. I feel like I understood what to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had a music lesson since I was like probably 12. Right. But I, um, yeah, I just like got head deep into it. I became like addicted to it, really. Right, right, right. So it kind of took over the rapping thing for like maybe a year and a year or a year and a bit. I think I remember that. I completely stopped rapping, basically, because I was just so invested in it. Mm-hmm. And then there was actually a little period when I was thinking like am I even gonna try rap like it's been so long and I might just try this producer route now but then I was like nah man it all started at the lyrics for me so mm-hmm. um, I'm glad you did because I'm trying to put it all together now I'm getting back in my bag yeah I'm glad I'm glad that you didn't um, stop I guess in that sense because it's not a lot of people like songwriting in itself is quite hard and I think the way that you songwrite I think I was listening to something to I can't remember exactly the the bar, but there was something that you said that just like like how we were talking about at Cantalos every day, it makes you think like and you have to digest it and it's like, Oh, well, they didn't mean that or they meant this or or just something sparks in your brain that I think in a lot of music I listen to nowadays it's not that like it doesn't the, exist. Yeah, the beat is there. They might have a wavy beat, but Half the time, the seven, ten rappers they they have the same bar. You'll probably go on like 100%. Genius, and you'll find the same bar in in all of them. Bro, what um, you're saying is so true. Yeah, and I'm glad you didn't stop because I think you have a lot to a lot to give in that sense. And um, well, I'll say one thing. I feel like my brain is a bit broken because ever since I was a kid, I've always just like it's like I do maths with words in mm. my head. Like, way before I, I, I was into music, like, mm. I would always, like, figure out weird, uh, witty names for things, or I'd always clock double meanings for things, always. Mm. So it was funny when I started doing the, like, that's also, I guess, why I started appreciating, like, when I was listening to early Kendrick and shit like that, because it would spark the same bit of my brain, which I was already mm. kind of used to doing in a non-music way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So... That's mad, you just like, mathematics, like, but... But do you kind of get what I'm trying to, trying to say? Like, yeah, yeah. It's like... We would always do that, just, like, make funny names for shit, or, like, yeah. do you know what I mean? Or you, like, double meaning shit, or I don't know. No, I do... Or I, someone says something, and then, like, you use the word, and you flip it, or, like, mm, do you know what I mean? Like, mm, yeah. No, I know what you're saying. I like that. I like that. I think it's... Um, I said maths, but words. Like, it's... Uh, uh, you know what I clocked as well? Like, someone was saying that... I don't want to get into that too much because someone was saying about neurodivergent people and neurotypical people, but um, it was to do with writing for films, yeah? Uh-huh. And people were saying that uh, when you go to write for film, let's say you've never written for film before, you might end up writing something like, uh, and I went and picked up the cup, or I went, do you get me? Like, it's quite, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but they said that the best way to write and the most neurotypical people they speak in like riddles, right? And I think that that's so interesting because... Mad. In a sense, like, you know when you watch a series, right? Right now, uh, Game of Thrones, yeah? You're watching it, okay. Yeah, I'm watching that, watching Rings of Power. But I realise that in the way they talk, they're, they're alluding to things. And um, that's why neurodivergent people might get... Um, sometimes they get praised, sometimes they don't get praised for saying things that are, like, quite honest or, like, bl- like blunt you know like honest truth or like being too frank um mm-hmm. but i think it makes sense and i think that's what people enjoy about music because you're or, or, or songwriting or things like that it's like with your lyrics you're alluding to something you're it's like a riddle and that's like the the the, the math bit that you're talking about it's like you're figuring out these words and i don't know for me it's interesting because i'm trying to learn how to do that a bit more because i i can be very like straight to the point or, or matter of fact um mm-hmm. but i like yeah i like the way you you described it because it's like you're piecing these words together and it, it can be an equation because um there's weight to certain words 
So in a sense, like, yeah, you can add you can add words and it, it can equal something. I just think that's mad. Kind it's mad, but mind. then there's <laughs> also and this is what I I, I love to do in it. Like I don't know, that's yeah, and but then there's the other flip side of it where there's people that I really fuck with that don't do that, but mm. the the way they carry their energy on a beat is so mad that yeah. you don't really care about the and we talk about that sometimes. You know yeah. what I mean? It doesn't matter. That's a whole. To be honest, like. I'm, I'm, yeah, we can, we can talk about that a bit later on. Like, but I'm working on some stuff that's gonna be a bit different as well. Like, I'm not mm-hmm. really trying to. I don't really understand genres. Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I do and I love them, but I, don't, I, I'm not really trying to be in one. I don't yeah, think. don't want to be in a box. So, yeah, I, I fuck think. with I fuck with everything, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, so. what what you said you talk about it later, but what um yeah, what are you alluding to? What type of mm-hmm. music can we expect? Um, Especially, yeah, not next, not like the next thing. You can like, expect fire, bro. That's what I'm gonna really say. You can expect absolute fire. Well, yeah, that's, yeah. Cool. that's that's a given. Like, that's a given. I think we spoke about this like I don't know, like five conversations ago. Okay. Cause I was I was talking about how my experience was as being an immigrant, but I don't think I know straight off the top of my head your, I guess, story in like London. Okay. Um, and how you find it growing up? Um, okay. Because I think for people who live in London, um, people who grew up in London, we all have like a different side that we see, um, and I think that comes out oh, in shit. music a lot. And I think that's what makes music in London so special. There's so many great artists that come out of London. But I think that would be, yeah. How, what was your, how did you first meet London and what was your experience with London? If it was like a person there, yeah, that's like that. So I met London the day I was born. Jeez. St. Mary's Hospital. Mad. And uh, yeah, I'll be honest with you. I had a pretty good, I feel like I had like a good upbringing. Mm-hmm. Um, I came in, I, came, I grew up in a quiet, well diverse area, walls and green. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I had working class friends, I had middle class friends, I had every kind of like black, white, it, like there wasn't really, growing up I didn't really see color, mm-hmm. to be honest mm-hmm. with you. I didn't really understand what racism was as a concept until right. I was probably a bit into my teens. Mm-hmm. Um, so, okay. I, 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 yeah, I go back to my parents more than anything. They mm-hmm. just proper like set me straight, had me grounded. I was in at night time, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, true. Skating twice a week if I was lucky when I was a bit older. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so. I think that's, would you say skateboarding it was like your um, biggest, biggest thing in life that like kind of, would, yeah. Could, would you call skateboarding like your first love almost? Um, in a sense. 100%. Yeah. Basically like, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I, f- I just feel sorry for people. What I'm really put saying on this is I feel sorry for people that don't understand skating because mm. it's it's not sport. It's like it's therapy, man. It, it's, there's so many layers to it. There's so it? many things. So so many. And layers. like, there's a sport aspect where it's like, oh yeah, people want to take it to this pro level, mm-hmm. and then there's just like, even people that are really amazing, you talk to them and they'll tell you the best thing about skating is just pushing on your board as mm. cheesy as that sounds yeah, 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 yeah and when you're having a tough day doing that and kind of just blocking out the world can so, so true. really just save you especially when you're so young in my vice really for the past decade yeah yeah i think especially if you're, you're young if you have any young skating listeners out there don't stop and don't stop. if if you're an older person with kids who want to start skating I, i'd suggest that you let them because <laughs> the amount of stuff you can learn and it, like you said it's like a lifestyle but it also shapes your brain because mm-hmm. there's that thing of like you start seeing things differently like the stairs are no longer just stairs like a ledge is no longer just a place to sit um, the whole architecture of the world changes in your perception yeah big facts and it's like I was with my friend the other day he was an architect mm. and we were walking past like a building and he was appreciating it on like a different level and it made me think of how like skaters also have that same vision mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and there's only like a few different practices i feel like in the world that have that it's quite sick 
But yeah, so skating, yeah, skating was definitely my first love. Um, it's definitely just like, it's taught me the like aspects of just like getting beat the fuck down, but just getting up. Like, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. <laughs> That's so Sorry, true. am I allowed to swear on? Yeah, 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 yeah. This I want it. I want it. I want this to be as just natural as possible and just IRL. I think, and it's so funny yeah, that term IRL is like it means in real life. But I think for me, it, it feels even deeper than that because it's not just being in like because you could be in real life, yeah, like, hundred, and it's not IRL. Like you're not there. Hundred. Like I've had that bear where I might be outside and I'm just not there, and that hundred. person is also just not there. But IRL is like a is a is a lifestyle, and I think we need to bring it back, back to just <laughs> this is so hard. Just just being just being, bro. Like, and I think that's something we had as a group um, growing up. Like, we we all just kept it very real, like like very real wherever we went, and we showed a lot of love and um, yeah, man, be- beautiful memories, beautiful memories that shaped shaped us uh, into who we are today. Um, okay, so what is your door of choice right now? Because I know you use GarageBand. What's my door of choice? I use Ableton. Ableton, okay. I, I only just started like fucking around with GarageBand on my yeah, phone yeah, like yeah. two months ago. It's so fun though. GarageBand is fucking powerful to any young producers out there that want to just like, they, you got your door at home or whatever in your home set up, but you just want to be able to keep your head fresh on the go. Just like fuck around with GarageBand, man. It's so mm-hmm. fun. Shout out like, to Steve Lacey. Trust. <laughs> Hella man doing mad f- full projects on that shit. It's you know? crazy. I think so. That's it's powerful still. The state that we're in, yeah, like as a world, because bro, we're on the verge of AI as well. And like, have you used Dali? Dali? Yeah. What's that? You know, like, Bo's on this big wave of like AI images where you can type in what you yeah, want yeah, and you get yeah. the images. I, I use that shit still. Okay, a little cool. Bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I it's think fucking cool stuff. It's kind of weird though, like, because growing up, I feel like we maybe have talked about things like this, of like, you know, like just the future and like dystopian or what's the world going to come to. Um, and now we're on the verge where things are so accessible to you. Like you said, on your phone, like anybody with an iPhone can just pull out GarageBand, make music. Um, everyone, someone who's not picked up a paintbrush can go and type something and you've got like art. Mm-hmm. Um I think what's so interesting, I actually saw that someone someone posted on the story today. They they asked an AI like, "What is the difference between your art and I guess human art?" Um, I didn't see the answer, but I just think that that's so Crazy. interesting. Um, I think, in a sense, I I believe that people are AI, in a sense, because you you grow up and it's blank, and then you get all this input, and then. Yeah, you make sense of things from the things that you've seen before. Well, they're trying to imitate human brains with the way that they're creating, isn't it? So yeah. that's why you might make that connection. But no, we're not AI. You don't think so? They are trying to imitate us. Don't let the Matrix take over your brain. <laughs> <laughs> I always really had that. Vi- uh, yeah, probably. I've, I've always held that belief. I'm just like, I feel like, um, yeah, the brain just puts things together in a, in a strange, strange way. Um in terms of like music videos, I know you put one out. Mm-hmm. Have you got any other plans? Did you fuck with that video? I liked it. I don't think I saw it properly. I saw like some of it. Um, what, the snippets? Yeah. You should I, watch the actual video. I need to watch it. I need to watch it's it. It's a completely different thing still. I need to watch it. Um, I think it's, from what I did see, um, I think I was just so proud of the fact that you had it lined up. I think I was like coming out with my business, like marketing brain. I was just like, my guy, like you actually got it lined up. Yeah. And I think that that's that's one of my, that's one of the biggest things. I thought it was just so, the rollout, the rollout was insane. I know you you got your your background, uh, your you used the, your knowledge like definitely on this on this release. Um, appreciate you, man. You, you upped it. You I upped it. Like you still. I think it's so. Yeah, I'm just so so proud of the fact that you 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 had an idea, you stuck with it, and you put it out there, and then to have that response, and then also just in yourself, I think that's the biggest thing to be so happy with something that you put something out. Um, 
I wasn't sure. Like, I'll be real with you. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure you were gonna do music. Like, I thought you were, like you said, you had that error of like just making beats. Um, Hundred. And but yeah, I got doubtful still myself still. But at the end of the day, like it's all that's really been on my head for a couple of years, and now you're I here. Just, I just had to push it in it. So Get I haven't out. even. I haven't even. I don't really feel like I've done anything really yet. To be honest with you. Yes. Like, Scratching the surface. Anything, so. Mm-hmm. I've, I just like want to just like keep on working non-stop mm-hmm. as much as I can as much as I'm trying to do you know what I mean mm-hmm. live life as well and like make peace do you know what I mean so yeah that's true L- going, London like, living London stressful out here fam trust me it's peak cost of living's going up well you're oh. doing good though <laughs> trust we're doing we're, we're doing our thing yeah, and trust <laughs> I think what would be really sick well obviously with my plans um I'd love to get like um, a session in, maybe also film that like partly, partly like just for like some background footage or something. But I just 100%. think I think that would be that'd be interesting because the one time we did get together with Robbie and in that space, that was your, fire, space, fam. even just like just sitting there and like bouncing off of each other and just seeing seeing how you work as well, um, and that's before you put anything out. So I wasn't even. And and what's crazy is like like you said a lot of the times the things that I heard from you your snippets they were also like varied, and like so different. So even then when you put out the album the the project I wasn't sure what to expect. As soon as I heard it I was like, uh, human beings in the type right? Yeah. What what did you say there? Is it human beings ain't the type? No, human beings on a type right. On a type right. Oh my god. Even madder. That's what I'm saying. There's so many <laughs> layers to it. Man. Have you um have you got your stuff like your lyrics up? Uh, no, but I can tell I can tell it to you wherever it is. What, okay. what are you looking for? No, because I wanted to get it like on Genius. You should yeah, I need Genius. to I need to put that shit up. I still. think that would be sick. I think that will on computer still. That yeah. will give um uh people who are listening just a deeper appreciation, deeper understanding. Because so I never really checked that shit though. I think, brother, I I do I I do bear like especially when there's something I fuck with. I'm like, let me actually go and check it out. Yeah, 100%. and also on Spotify, they put they put you can put your lyrics up on Spotify. I think that's even better because you don't have to go on Google. Yeah, um, exactly, exactly, exactly. But I think that would be hard. And yeah, I need to do that still. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm excited. I'm excited. What's your too. favorite song from that project? From the project, um, what song is that one? But it's like the, the Papa Bar. So the so, old memories is, which one's the one with the with the parents line in it? No aims. No aims. That's the music video one. Yeah, I like no aims, but I also like the first one I heard, which was um, what's it called? Shoe. Shoe marks. Shoe marks. Shoe marks. Shoe marks. But which one's the one I'm talking about? The typewriter. That's old memories. Old memories. See. Because they're all quite, they, they can blend in one another, but all memories. All right, I'll say all memories then. I'm going to say all memories. Just because when I hear that, it's like, all memories, all memories, all memories. Like, and that's, that, that's so sick that you actually, um, what's it called? You put your voice. I definitely want to hear some like singing. Some, trust, trust, some trust. Some more sing, singing tunes. That would be hard. Trust. Um, Trust, but yeah, we need to work on some shit together as well, bro. Yeah, facts, 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 facts. It's been it's been lovely having you on the set. We're definitely off. Once we press pause, we're gonna chill and talk about some more things. Um, but yeah, I think this is what's good about this interview. I think, like you said, with your music, is that we're just scratching the surface, mm-hmm. and I feel like you've got bare bare to give, like musically. Um, so I think, I think, yeah, I think people need to, need to be present and waiting because I don't, um, in terms of like music, yeah, this is fresh. This is, this is like, it, there's a lot of stuff, yeah, there's a lot in it that will be unlocked. 100. And I feel like even like a year later, someone might say, oh, is that what you meant with that? Well, blah, blah, blah. So I'm excited. I'm excited to see what you come up with. Um, and we're definitely going to, we're definitely going to do more stuff um, on the channel. Um, and yeah, make sure maybe give the, well, I'm going to put all your socials and everything 
um, down below. But please keep an eye out on Sam. Um, no, no, no. And shade on the stern hour on all platforms yes. right now. Make sure you run, run up, run up the Sam numbers. Can, no run one up is the numbers. Baby. We're trying to get, trying to get that Spotify bag, <laughs> <laughs> every bag possible. Um, nice and Spotify bag. And yeah, come on. Peace out. Love. Safe niggas. Cheers. Um, I just wanted to add something. Yeah, I'll add edit it in somewhere because there'll be bits. Yeah, I'll just no, add this one bit to it. It was the, the line about the sci fi. How's it go? That's the one with the human beings in the type, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, it's like human beings in the type, right? Just to see what's just to see what's happening. That's it. That sound is cold. Um, Sorry, I fucked out there for these forgotten lyrics. No, but that sounded cold. Actually, you know what? I should actually do that as well. Like, like have a freestyle section. Not a freestyle section, but like. Trust, trust, so trust, I add trust, that, add trust. that at some point in the future. But um, trust. yeah, I feel like some people might relate. I definitely related to that bar. Um, maybe it's like I don't want to get gender involved, but you know that meme where it's like you go and watch like Batman or something when you're younger, and you come out feeling like Batman. Like you, you can't help it. Like um, um, maybe that's like main character syndrome, or I don't know. I, I hate labels. But there's a lot. <laughs> we like people do that, and I think that was um, such a such a thing because I've bugged out over things like thinking the Truman Show and like, am I in the Truman Show? Is this the thing? But um, trust me, Shakespeare said it the best. What's it? We're all actors, and the world is like a stage. Um, and I, and I think you even saying something like that, it just shows that there's a there's this as a a, a, a theme through creatives who who maybe can't distinguish in a good way like life between yeah what we see because that's what we're brought up on like brought up on films like a lot of my english a lot of things just in general life you watch a film and you go wow okay like that's how somebody else does it or that's how some and and then then obviously there's like another layer where you realize that they're actors yeah. and i think it's so cool because that ties in as well um, you've done some extra work before, yeah. um, so that's even madder. Like that, you said that line, and you know the process. Like what, what, what? Right. Let's say before before you found that out, right? Before you went to do the extra work, and maybe you would you say you you've thought like that before, where you feel like life's a bit of like a movie, and 100%. you're going through scenes. That's my ethos. Though. Life Sick. is a movie. Facts, facts, you're facts. The main character. Let's go. Make sure you remember that. Extra in mind. Yep, that's facts. <laughs> that's facts. What is um, how was that like then? Seeing the production and being like, oh, this isn't like really real. Like maybe or did you know that before that or like? In what sense? Like when before you did any extra work, did you know the in depths of like production and things like that, or like, um, did you still have that notion that you know cinema is like this big thing? And then seeing the reality of it, like sitting in the in costume for like I don't know, chatting with somebody, and then you have to act a certain way. Was that any? Did that jog anything in your head? Um. We're we talking about acting now. Yeah, acting, but okay. also that how it ties into like life and how life feels like a movie. But uh, then you 100%, go to the set. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, even just the other day, I was doing a scene and scene resonated with something that I do in a, or that happens to me in a day to day life mm. like on the reels and that kind of literally was the Truman Show in a way like <laughs> man was going through like something that happens to me on a regular but there's a whole camera team behind me right and now and you were playing and I was you? playing me like <laughs> doing what I do so it was kind of weird I'm not going to speak too much on it yeah, obviously yeah. but yeah and that's just kind of a an analogy for life, really. Like, it's all just a movie. <clears throat> you got to make sure that you use this shot because you yeah. don't know how much film's left on the camera, baby. Yo, that's it. Yo, that's facts. That's so facts. Um, I think that's a good message to... Because to, we, already, we already... Yeah, that's a good message to give people. Because like, some people use it as a diss. They're like oh, you think you're, like, the main character or, you know, there's that thing, like, online people can be like that. But 100. I think 
you will never get the most out of life until you have have that thought in your head. Well, uh, like everyone, make you know that you are the main character. Of course you like, are. Because no one else. But like I've gone through that where I feel like I'm just I'm just here. I'm just in the background. Do you get me? But it's only when I deep that, and that's when I was like, start living my life. Otherwise, bro, you're just gonna, no, you're just gonna be, you're just gonna fall behind 100%, everything bro. else, and you have to take that action, take those steps, match match that action with whatever you're trying to manifest, and and then you can have mad success, like Sam, putting out the big project Come and on, and getting that love light. Um, so yeah, you're 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 living proof that you need to take the reins. Uh, and be that person for yourself so yeah peace out <laughs> done now CK TK Canta Locals shout out Grape you know what it is shout out to the man them shout out all the real RNs <laughs> all the parents <laughs> big facts all the good people big facts <laughs>